Good morning, you two. Imagine if the classroom, if your classroom, was a barn. That's the case here at Kwantlen University in Cloverdale. Ever heard of a farrier before? It's the art of making horseshoes. This program here is only one of two in all of Canada, and we're going to learn all about it here this morning. They have to know, they have to learn everything they can about horseshoes, the anatomy of horses. We have a number of them here this morning, including a pony, too. Yes, everyone loves a pony. All of this is coming up this morning. I'll be making some horseshoes. I'll be putting a horseshoe on one of these horses. All of that uh, coming up should be good. All right, I can't wait to see that. Thank you so much, Greg. And the little pony is so cute. The barn here is the classroom. We're learning all about the farrier program, the art of ho horseshoeing. This is Kelly, a student here. This is Gerard, who is an instructor here. Kelly is going to start by taking this horseshoe off. She is. So is this a, a, a nine-month program? Nine-month program for 12 students. It's okay. a small group. We have horses come in from the local area. This, this is Kelly's own horse, the show jumper. And now what she's going to do is she's going to cut the clinches, the little parts of the nail that actually keep the shoe on. As you can see, in, in this shoe there are uh, seven nails, and she has to cut each of those clinches with this little chisel tool. And then she'll start pulling the shoe off from the heel to the right. toe. The hoof, the hoof looks like it's really thick, but it's only, on this horse, it's about maybe three-eighths of an inch thick. So there's not a lot of covering on the bottom of the foot to protect the, uh, the sensitive structures within the, the hoof. This horse weighs about 1,400 pounds, and jumping over a big fence, the, the horse needs to have that protection on the bottom. So Bubba doesn't seem to mind this at all. How sensitive is the horse's... The hoof, the, itself is not, the hoof itself is not sensitive. It, it's a big fingernail, but within yeah. it we have sensitive tissue. So as you can see now, we've got two different parts here keeping the shoe on. We've got the nails and then we've got the clips, two clips on either side. Right. And those nails went through the fingernail and exited about halfway up the hoof wall and then they were folded over and that's what we call the clinch. And it's the clinch that she cut to pull the shoe off. How often do you have to put horseshoes on and how often do you have to take them off? Like every six weeks. Every six weeks, yeah. why is that? Well, because the fingernail is growing all the time. It's okay. just the same as her, her, her own fingernails. So the, the, the hoof is cone shaped yeah. and as it, thanks Greg, that's one of the things that's really important. So we want, want to, to step on that. want to turn it this way. Okay, why, why is yeah. that? Well, the nails will fall out otherwise. Okay, good point, good point. <laughs> So we're going to go to the other side. You're going to do it on the on the other foot. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're going to learn all about this program. This is only one of two in all of Canada, and the only one in British Columbia. And I'm going to try making a horseshoe too. All of that's coming up. Maybe I should uh, step aside here so and uh, try putting on or taking off a horseshoe myself. I'm going to do that right now. We'll see you in a bit. All right. You learn something new every day, Greg. We'll check back with you in the seven o'clock hour. Let's come back inside the BT studios. And Kelly is very busy here, Riaz. Good morning. Uh, this, we're at Kwantlen University in Cloverdale learning all about the Farrier uh, program. We already took the horseshoes off of Bubba here, and now Kelly's doing some, some trimming, right, Gerard? That's right. What, what Kelly's doing is she's snipping the fingernail. That outer border, it corresponds to our fingernail, and that's what the shoe is applied to. Now, the inner part, um, Kelly has already taken the, the knife, the hoof knife, and has thinned the sole a little bit so we can expose that fingernail. Horses need their, their fingernails trimmed back about every six weeks. This horse is a little particular in that he needs his fingernail trimmed back a little more often, about once a month, because if they get too long, his hind feet will crash into his front ones. Right. This guy's a really talented jumper. He used to be a dressage horse, and uh, probably he's going to end up going to Spruce Meadows. He's, so, he's that good. So this is a nine-month program here at Kwantlen. Is it full-time? Yeah, full-time. It. Uh, it's, it's a very rigorous program. The students come in about 7.30 in the morning and don't leave until about 5 in the evening. As you can see, we have horses in the barn each day, and the majority of the time is spent either at the amble or underneath the horse. I should mention, not just horses, but a pony as well, right over there. That's, so, li that's Little Boots. Little Boots. Once somebody graduates, is now a, a farrier, What's, what's the line of work like? Well, when they graduate, they're an apprentice farrier. They spend another two years, two to three years, working with someone in the field, getting the field experience. Okay. Because we teach them the technical skills here, but an important part of being self-employed, which every farrier is going to be, is the people skills. So they have to learn how to deal with the clients and also deal with the horses out in their own environment instead of in this wonderful training facility that we have here at Kwantlen University. But there's a lot of work out there. Oh, absolutely. There's, okay. there's lots of work if you're talented. Thank you very much. There's some talented, talented students here this morning. We're going to go to the forging station next and actually uh, make a horseshoe. But in closing here, 
We've got Al and his daughter Megan. They're competing in this Jack FM contest. And one of the 75 things that you have to do in order to win $10,000 is have a picture taken with a local TV host. I guess that would, I fit that bill. I think you fit that bill. So let's do this. Megan's going to take the picture. Yeah. All right, uh, more coming up here from uh, Kwantlen University. By the way, we'll be going live with Larry and Willie when this contest is over and find out who wins in $10,000. Maybe it's going to be Al. Maybe. That's all right, get ready to say cheese Go ahead, cheese Megan, there. snap away. There we'll you go. The Excellent. They're everywhere. Look at this. This is Little Boots, a pony. We're here at Kwantlen University inside of the classroom, which is a barn. We're learning all about the farrier program. You're a good pony. You're a good pony. What is a farrier, you might be asking? Well, they make horseshoes. That's what they do. And they have to learn everything that you can learn about a horse and a pony. What they do is they measure the hoof, and then they go over to a forging station like this. This is where we find uh, Ailee, who is a program assistant here at Kwantlen University. What goes on here, Ailee? Uh, this is where we make horseshoes. So they're usually made in three parts. We'll start with a straight piece of steel, like this. Mm -hmm. We'll then bend, make a toe bend. We make a first branch, we punch the nail holes. Now we're on to the, the second branch where we will. You have to work very quickly, right? Yes, you want to use your heat as efficiently as possible. So. How hot is the steel right now? Uh, how hot is the steel right now? Yeah, 2,000 degrees. 2,000 degrees. Yeah, when it's bright, uh, bright orange like this. So when you so, measure the hoof, say yeah. say the, the hoof in total is is nine inches. Yeah, you do. Um, how would that translate over here when you, you cut the steel? You deduct an inch and three quarters okay. from from that because the steel is going to stretch that much. Mm -hmm. So if it was nine inches, then you'd be seven and uh, seven and three quarters. Okay. That's it. From start to finish, how long does it take to make a horseshoe? Uh, it depends when you first start it'll feel like all day but when you get efficient it could be for a pair of shoes you could do a pair in about 10 12 minutes oh well, that's it yeah so okay. it just depends on uh, on you know your your level of, of expertise and, and how long okay. you've been doing them thank you very much so, Eileen out of time here okay. we are gonna put a horseshoe we've taken one off we've now seen how they make them now we're gonna put one on and they actually burn it on it doesn't, doesn't hurt the horse by the way uh, that is coming up next. I'll take these off now. Uh, this farrier program, very interesting, Michelle. It's nine months full time, and they can only accept 12 students. So uh, there's, a, there's a big waiting list to get in. Wow, it's more of it coming up. Oh, work it, Riaz. No. And, and Flora, this is not a boot camp that we're covering today. We're learning all about the Farrier program, which is here at Kwantlen University in Cloverdale. Farrier, it's all about horseshoeing. It's very physical. You've got to make the horseshoes, and you've got to work with the horses. That's why fitness is huge here. Coming up next, we're going to put a horseshoe on a horse. There's some burning involved there. No, it won't hurt the horse. Never worked out with chaps before. Actually, a farrier apron. But here I am doing it now. You're watching BT. Stay with us. Welcome back. You are watching Breakfast Television. We are learning all about the trade of farrier. It's all, yes, that's right. We got a horse uh, talking to us here. We're at uh, Kwantlen University in Cloverdale. Being a farrier, it's all about working with horseshoes, and we're going to put one on a horse coming up here right now. What's going on here, Gerard? I'm uh, just getting the shoe ready to burn it on the horse's hoof, and Kelly, one of my students, is going to burn it on the hoof. Kelly, one of your students, this is a nine-month program here, full-time, correct? Thank That's you. right. Okay. She's uh, a little more than halfway through the program, so go ahead and, and fit the shoe. Part of the process of shoeing the horse is taking the hot shoe and fitting, hot fitting it to the horse's hoof. So what's happening now is we're burning the fingernail. The horse can't feel that. It looks really dramatic, but it doesn't, doesn't bother the horse at all. What might bother the horse is the smoke and, yeah. the, and the sound, but that doesn't hurt the horse. And this gives us a, a perfect match between the bottom of the shoe and the bottom of the horse's hoof. So, so what do you think of this program, Kelly? It, it's hard work, but it's definitely be rewarding. I'll take the shoe, Kelly. Okay. What got you into it? Um, I've always been around horses all my life, so okay. it's just something I've wanted to do. I can't picture myself being in an office job, so. So you recommend this to other people that are potentially thinking of doing this? For sure. What does it take to be a good farrier, Gerard? First of all, being fit, really fit. Let's having, talk having about that for a quick set. Okay. You're sweating profuse, <laughs> profusely right now. Our viewers might be wondering why. Fitness is huge here. They just did a huge little uh, workout because you yeah. want people to be... You have, you have to have a core level of fitness and you also have to be really flexible. So okay. we do a little bit of yoga in the morning as well before we start our fitness routine. That's smart. All schools yeah. should do that. Yeah, and that, absolutely. You know, 
By the way, I took a horseshoe off, not live on BT, but we'll have that on our website. It took me quite a while. I'm going to try putting one on as well. We'll do that for our website as well. We need to talk about, because we're, we're talking about horseshoes all day here, obviously, yeah. the luck of horseshoes. Where did this come from? Well, there's an old fable that the devil turned up in a blacksmith shop uh -huh. in the guise of a cloved animal, a hooved animal, and asked the blacksmith to, to repair one of his hooves, to shoe one of the hooves. And as the blacksmith was working on the hoof, he realized that he was dealing with the devil. So he drove a nail into the sensitive foot inside the hoof and injured the devil. So the devil and the blacksmith have never had a good relationship ever since. And part of the story is that the devil or the blacksmith took that shoe and then nailed it above his door. And of course, it's important that it's nailed the right way up. Yes, thank you very much. Great information here this morning. Yes, if you have a horseshoe above a door, don't, well, don't have it like this because that means the luck runs out of it. Have it like this, Don, because then the luck goes in and it stays there. That well, is there fascinating. You go. Oh, Real quick. Make sure it's really well nailed to the door. Yeah, good, good So it doesn't Make fall. Make sure it's really well nailed to the door too, Exactly, Dawn. that is yeah. fascinating. I'm so glad I found out that story. My dad's side of the family, they're all farmers and they all had horseshoes um, above the farmhouses and I always wondered what that was for. So good to know. Thank you very much, Greg. Very interesting this morning.